714 and at mic number two, Baxter County Sheriff John Montgomery. Hey, sir. How are you, sir? I'm fine. How you been? Fantastic. Yeah, me too. Weather's great. You bet. Uh, Cotter Trout Festival was last weekend. It was well attended. Great event. Life yep. is good. Life is good. I'm telling you. Well, why don't we skip the gristle, get down to the bone. Okay. Baltimore. Uh, that's yeah. a place in Maryland. Maryland uh-huh. <laughs> what if, and, and you know, I've got to wondering about this. We have so many tourists come through. What if a tourist of another race came in, caused a problem with, and something happened. And then all of a sudden, and I, the thing I'm getting at is you've got a, a, a smartphone. I don't think goodness. All it has to do is just hit social media and it blows up. And it may be that, uh, a DWI, but they blow it out of proportion. Is a lot of this stuff being blown out of proportion in this lack of respect towards police really, really bothers me because we're, in my opinion, this is my opinion, we're not getting the support of our law enforcement from Washington, D.C. That's my opinion. I think that they're supporting the bad guys. Now, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I want to put you on the spot. What do we do? How do we avoid that in Baxter County? Or in Ozark County, Missouri. I mean, we're all vulnerable, are we or are we not? What are, what's your thoughts? Well, first of all, and, and let me just preface this by saying the problem with a what if is I could take, I mean, I get these questions all well, what if this? Well, what if this? Well, the problem when you're dealing with law enforcement, the law is not black and white. Our reaction from law enforcement is not necessarily black or white. It's all based on every situation. So, again, what happened in Baltimore? You know, should the officers, you know, did they have the right or, you know, the authority to arrest him or not? I don't know because I don't have all the facts. And so from the comment, from that standpoint, I'm not going to because I don't have all the facts. Now, as far as the issue that I think bothers me the most is there is a difference between a protest and a riot. Exactly. And so uh, well, this country, if you think about it, was was founded on the, the, our rights to protest what we don't agree with. Mm -hmm. and, and and so I think, you know, you go back and look at New York, for example, when they were having their issues, the vast majority of that was protests. They were not riots. You no, we're, saw we're, we're in New York, oh, oh, yeah. when you when you saw the mass of people moving down the streets, they were going in protest. But what you didn't see was, I mean, again, for the most part, you didn't see the burning. You didn't see the, the destruction of property. But you look at Ferguson, you look at Baltimore, and, and that's what you're seeing. And so that bothers me a great deal. And even I'll step back into Ferguson. When you looked at the number of people that got arrested, most of them wasn't from Ferguson. No. They came in to, to cause destruction. To oh, cause... As a matter of fact, I talked to some folks at Searcy, Arkansas, that their children had an event in St. Louis as a school outing that stayed in a hotel in Illinois, just across the river. And there's a bus, a couple of buses there from Chicago. Oh, what are you here for? We're here to protest. They came in from Chicago. You're here, what? We're going to Ferguson to protest. They were from Chicago. Mm -hmm. They bust them in. See, that, that, that bothers me. Now, back to the, <clears throat> the situation here. <clears throat> Certainly anything could happen here. First of all, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the issue here, there, wherever is, again, it, it's based on uh, we hope that the officers do the right thing. If you're going to ask me, you know, do, do is there bad cops? Certainly. Uh, do people make mistakes? Certainly. Do cops make mistakes? Absolutely. Hmm. We, you know, but what I think you'll find in this area is number one, you're going to have the support. If I look around, uh, and if I look around at the police chief, uh, and, and by the way, here here's part of the issue. I was asked this the other day typically if you look at those situations they happen inside the city of new york inside the city of baltimore inside the city of first i mean those and so what's happened in those cases you've got there's a there's a lot more politics involved in this this standpoint if you've got a police department uh here you're going to have a police chief that's that's trying to to direct uh mm -hmm. his personnel but then you've got a mayor that actually is the boss of the police chief. And even though the mayor doesn't answer in a direct fashion to the city council, the city council has usually, and there's usually anywhere from seven to, to, to 11 people on there. They all have a voice uh, because they're, they're directed at, at running the city. So you've got a whole lot of folks that can make input. Now, 
you flip the coin, if this issue had happened out in the county, guess who the sheriff answers to? Strictly the voters. There mm -hmm. is no one above the sheriff. Really? So, in a sense, had those things happened, and again, I don't even know the sheriffs in those areas, so, so it's again, I can't speak from personal experience as far as the, uh, the way they would handle it, but I think it could be handled a lot differently uh, because there's a lot less of the politics involved. Uh, now, here, I know the mayor of Mountain Home very well. I feel very confident that Mayor Diller would, would stand you? behind law enforcement. He has. I worked for him years ago when he was mayor before. Uh, you know, you look at uh, the chief of police again, I feel like, you know, Kari's going to do the right thing. And of course, again, I'm talking about home and this, this would apply yeah. to the smaller towns. Uh, I know as far as my, my officers are concerned, uh, you know, they're going to have the support from me. Uh, so w what we would do, of course, is try to diffuse that situation, uh, in an orderly, uh, fashion, but what we wouldn't tolerate is the destruction of property. Right now back to the last part of your question about the, the support. I do think that in many ways, the support, and I, I heard this uh, a few days ago, if you, and, and I'm, I'm picking on the mayor of New York for just a moment. Um, if you looked at the, the approval rating of the New York city, uh, police department, uh, go back just a few short years ago, it was extremely high, highest it'd been in years when the mayor took over and some of the issues and he started not not only not supporting law enforcement, but at the same time, I think making comments that were actually, that was actually hurting law enforcement in the community. Now, all of a sudden you see the approval rating dropping even to the point of, uh, of the no longer allowed to do stop and frisk, which New York mm. had, uh, you know, you can argue, but if stop and frisk is done correctly, mm -hmm. and I will say that correctly, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that there, there couldn't be cops out there abuse it, but it's done for the safety of the officer or the community. And they were taking lots of illegal guns off the street. Hmm. Now that they've been ordered not to do that, uh, you've seen a rise in crime. You've seen a rise in incidents, rise in shootings and so on and so forth. So if, if law enforcement does their job the way they're supposed to, we can actually do preventive work rather than just a response, uh, when events happen. So preventive keeps you from being the defense. Well, and again, we do, we is a large part, law enforcement is a reaction. You True. call, you need help, we, we show up. Yeah. Uh, you know, whether it's a store getting robbed or a burglary, we show up after the fact, so mm -hmm. to speak. But a lot of what we do is, pre is prevention. Now, the problem with prevention, Dale, is typically it's hard to measure. And, and it's certainly hard to measure in a short period of time. I'll give you an example. Inside Mountain Home. Uh, Mountain Home Police Department does a, a, a great job as far as patrolling, checking businesses, convenience stores, and so on and so forth. When was the last robbery? Boy, I can't. I can't remember. I can't remember. Yeah. Now here's the question: Is that because they do such a great job patrolling? I you know, yeah. Well, is but it? But who knows? You who, can't measure. You it. <laughs> can't measure that. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> that's part of the the issue. Uh, it it it's what crimes did you prevent when you drove through the neighborhood? What crimes did you prevent when you patrol? What crimes did you, it, it that's sometimes hard to measure. Yeah. Now you, over a long period of time, you can look before and after if you've made some policy change. Uh, but again, a lot of what we do is prevention and that's why we encourage our deputies. And it is tough because we only got three deputies to cover the whole county when they're, when they're working. But when you look at that, we encourage them when they're not answering calls to drive through the neighborhoods patrol, you know, the, the roads and so on and so forth, because again, we want to be seen. We want the public to know that we're out there. And here's the kicker. <laughs> I'm as guilty of this as anybody else. I'll be driving through town. I see a policeman. What's the first thing I do? Well, I take my foot off the accelerator. I look at my speedometer. Can't help it. Do it. First so, thing you do. so that was one of the things when I first took office, we had a lot of unmarked cars, uh, or slick tops as they call them. We've, we've got lights on, we put lights on every car. Really? We, even my chief deputy's got lights on top of his car. Really? Marked up and seen. Uh, now the detectives don't, that's a little bit different situation. So, but the reason is because for what you just said, when you see a marked a car, you typically slow down mm -hmm. or you check your speed or your brake or depending on whatever. Um, so we are actually out there 
even though you may not get stopped, just the fact that we drove through. And it made me aware of my driving. Absolutely. And that's the prevention. Absolutely. Because let's say I was seven miles over the speed so, limit and didn't realize it until I saw the policeman. And because we drove through and you sl and you either slowed down or, or or what, did we prevent an accident? Possibly. How do you know? That's why prevention is hard to there make. There you go. There you go. Well, um, <clears throat> uh, going back to the the Baltimore situation, um, recently I just joined Back to Shiny Ride to Life. Now, every October they line the streets with a silent, I won't call it a silent protest. And I'm assuming they follow the guidelines. Now, what if there's an incident in there? I mean, Dale, I, and, and I'm, and I, too hypothetical. I, and I'm telling you, it really is. It's yeah. just like when someone says, well, what if I took a, you know, what if I had a gun? What, I what, if, give, what if, what if, what if a frog had wings? He wouldn't his butt on rock I, when he I trust that our officers are trained yeah. enough to handle the situation. And if they need more help, they'll say, we need more help. And even though that may be in town, if they ask, if the city asks for help, they'll get help from the yeah. the county, the state, the uh, you you name it, they'll have help come. Now you said you had three deputies to cover the county. Mm -hmm. Yes, from top to bottom. I mean, yes. <laughs> how do you cover it so well? Well, and we have not I mean, had from it, Missouri to Big Flat. We have not had an increase in the patrol staff. I believe I think it was 1998 or 99 was the last time we had any patrol That's increase. Twenty years. Yeah. Uh, and look at how this area has grown in the last 20 years. So, uh, but um, when you look, we have to, we're on duty 24 7, seven days a week, 365. <clears throat> so, uh, it takes, we have 13 patrol deputies. Uh, a lot of people don't realize, but we're mandated by the Constitution. We have to bail off the courts. We have to serve civil process. We have to, so we may have more deputies than that, but as far as who we can assign, you, you look at the bailiffs in the court. Yeah. Uh, I, we've got volunteers. We've got a lot of reserves that volunteer hundreds and hundreds of hours at the court complex that, to be honest with you, they probably, if I didn't have the reserves, I'd have to have, I'd have to have two people by law to, to cover the court. I'd have to hire two more people just to cover the courts. That doesn't cover the civil process. Uh, warrants service, uh, jail staff. And again, jail staff is an example. We're mandated to have a jail. Okay, we've got a jail. Unfortunately, it's busting at the seams. The the personnel I have hired right now, I don't have enough staff for how many we have in jail. What do you do? Bring well, in the, well, there, well, there's no money. I mean, there's just not enough money to to staff the jail adequately. Uh, so incidents are going up. Assaults on jailers are going up. Assaults from inmate to inmate are going up because when you start putting more and more folks into a small space, tensions get yeah, high. It compresses the situation. Yep. And so uh, it's an issue. And I can tell you, jail overcrowding, uh, when I got up Saturday morning, our jail capacity, or excuse me, not Saturday morning, Friday morning. I saw it on Facebook. No, it was Saturday morning. I apologize. Oh, it, was it was 113 in jail, and our capacity is 101. Yeah. And of course, some people say, well, wow, that's fine. Just stack them in there. Well, uh, well, we, we are putting them on the floor, but again, you look at the staffing that required is required. And when you start putting them on the floor, mm -hmm. the tensions are even higher. So therefore we need extra staff on top of that. Um, we just, again, it comes down to, in How this do you case, keep from pulling your hair out. Well, I mean, it just comes down to money. Against the wall. It comes down to money. And so we have to make priorities. I actually know that, you know, Marion County's in a terrible shape yeah they're they need to jail they're about to have their jail shut down i know when uh governor hutchinson called in back in april uh, bob zador was here and asked that question what can we do because marion county was hurting so bad and so that, that's almost an emergency situation there their their jail standards is is i'm telling you they're close to petitioning to shut marion county down mm -hmm. now the problem is is that it, then they're gonna have to start paying typically 50 to 60 dollars a day to, to for somebody to hold their prisoners but where are they going to take them i can't take them you're you're more than full. I'm more than full. Guess what? Boone County's more than full on the weekends too. What do you do? So where are they going to take them? Uh -huh. And then they have to. Then they're going to have to have nothing but transport officers to go pick them up for court, all kinds of appearances. So they're going to. I mean, it's going to. There goes the budget. There, yeah. Wow, I'm glad I'm not in your shoes. Sorry. <laughs> I do love my job. <laughs> 95% of the time. 95% of the time. Busy with Sheriff John Montgomery. Real quick, don't forget about the 8th Annual Spring Cruise in Saturday, May 9th at Century 21 Lee Car Show with hot dogs out there, John.
from 11 to 3, First Security Bank's cooking uh, hot dogs, all kinds of cars. Don't, when we come back from break. Okay. Don't forget, to, uh, we got Friday is uh, government, government day. day. Okay, so we'll talk about we'll that. Talk about we'll that. be right back. More with the Sheriff right after this. Seven thirty-five on May seventh. Back with the sheriff at mic number two. Good morning, Baxter Good County. Good morning. So, what were we going to talk about? Uh, we got Government Day on Friday. That's right. Uh, so, Government Day basically, uh, typically m April is supposed to be County Government Month. Uh, all of our schedules were so covered up in April that we couldn't do it. So, this Friday, I guess that's tomorrow, isn't it? Wow. It, it is, is tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's 8th, yeah. Wow. Okay, tomorrow uh, from 11 to 2 is government day, so you can go by the courthouse. You can tour and see the different offices and the county offices. Come by the jail, uh, and if you and drive over, the, the Bear State Bank is cooking hot dogs. Really? In front of the jail, and you can come by there, and we're giving jail tours uh, roughly every 30 minutes. So if you want to stop by and see uh, what it's like on the inside, uh, you're welcome to stop by. I got asked if we we're going to be serving beans and cornbread. We do that sometimes at open houses that we've had, but no, t tomorrow's just the hot dogs. But uh, <laughs> um, but if you want to come by, we'd love to have you come by, and you can tour the jail, and, and uh, again, be happy to answer any questions. we got a lot of other operations there uh, that we'd be happy to, to show you as well. And I made the point when uh, <clears throat> County Judge Pendergrass was here, Mayor was here yesterday, um, this is the transparency of the government. And this is a cordial invitation to come by and say hello. Absolutely. Ask questions, see the facilities, the offices. You know, this is this is our chance, really. Mm -hmm. No. Absolutely. When we talk, well, nobody in government ever listens. They do what they want. Well, come by and talk to the sheriff. Come by and talk to the county judge. Come by and talk to the mayor, the collector, the assessor, the treasurer. You know. Yep. I welcome people. Um, you know, stop by and I get, I get people stop by sometimes just to ask questions. Sometimes just say hi. Uh, sometimes they want to offer suggestions, which I am always open for. We're always trying to find new and better ways of doing things. Um, some of the suggestions I get, I can't legally do. <laughs> <laughs> that, typically, just imagine. that typically comes with the jail. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've got a lot, I get a lot of suggestions on how to handle the overcrowding in the jail, but a lot of those are not legal. What was that picture I saw? You and Marianne and the uh, oh yeah the Wall of Honor. <clears throat> um, that think that uh, good lead into something else. I want to talk about okay. this morning. Um, we when I took office uh, ten ten and a half years ago, uh, in the desk drawer when I walked in, uh, former Sheriff Edmonds had had left behind uh, a sack that had a, a lot of the pictures of the old sheriffs, and they were just there. And so having I kind of talked to some of them, and I guess they, they, somebody had brought them to the sheriff's office or accumulated them or whatever, and so over the years, but what do you do with them? And so the, there's really not a great spot in the sheriff's office to put that many, and so they talk about putting them down the hallway, but if you do that, the public can't see them. So they've sit there for a long time. We use them on our website. There's a spot called the History of the Sheriffs that you can go and see the biography of every sheriff, but we really never did anything with them. And partly because if it's one of those things, if you're going to do it, I want it to be done right. I want it to look attractive. So uh, someone came up with the idea. And so the Baxter County Sheriff's Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization uh, that's chartered to, to help the sheriff's office, uh, solicited donations and got enough money to purchase nice, nice frames, matting, really? the whole works. And so now, if you walk in the front door of the sheriff's office, and would encourage all of you just to stop by and take a look, we've got a history of all the sheriffs, all their pictures. We're missing three out of all since 1873. Wow. We're, we've got every picture but one, and they're uh, displayed on uh, right there in the front lobby of the sheriff's office. Um, and so, Mary Ann, this was kind of her project. Uh, she and the Historical Society originally did all the work to get the bi biographies. Uh, for the sheriffs, but then she's also, even though she retired from the sheriff's office, she's still a reserve with, officer with us and donates hundreds of hours. And so she took this project on and been working on it, and it is incredible. You need to stop by and I look. Need to come by and see that. It, it's I impressive. Bet it's very interesting. It is extremely interesting. And it goes back how far? Eighteen what? Eighteen seventy three, I believe it is. Oh yeah. Yep. I remember nineteen seventy three, the centennial. So were you around here in seventy three? Uh, no, I didn't move here till nineteen eighty three. Really? Yep. Yep. 
had the had the had the centennial. That's what it was the centennial. Every, all, all the guys had to wear beards. <laughs> Well, it is. I'm telling you, it, it's impressive. And and on that same note, let me let me tell you again. The Baxter County Sheriff's Foundation. It was founded to assist the sheriff's office. And what it does is it gives. Sometimes we get folks that just want to say thank you to, to the sheriff's office. Um, and I'll give you an example. And she asked me not to use her name, so I won't. But there was a lady came to see me, uh, and she said this has been some time back. And she said, "Look," she said, "My husband's passed away." Y'all have been out here on two different occasions, and both times the deputy came out by themselves late at night and had to arrest a drunk. Both times they had to fight the drunk that was trying to get into our house. Okay? Mm. And so the deputy had to fight him, get him, get him handcuffed, and hauled him off. And, and so we talked about the fact that, you know, how unsafe it was and how dangerous it was for the deputy and so on and so forth. So she said, I just want to know. What can we do? What can I do for you since my husband's gone to, to, to help the, the safety of your officers? So we talked quite at length about different possibilities and so on and so forth. And, and she was asking about some being able to write it off taxes, which is fine. And so with the Sheriff's Foundation, because it's a 501c3, ultimately she wrote a check for $10,000 to buy tasers for our deputies. Good job. Now what she did is wrote the check to the foundation. The foundation purchased the tasers and gave them to the sheriff's office. So she gets the tax advantage. Sheriff's office got tasers, and that's how we got tasers. There's been other incidents like that where they bought bulletproof vests. We had a situation where uh, female deputies didn't have bulletproof vests. They were trying to wear or this design for females. So they were trying to wear a male bulletproof vest, which is not very comfortable. Someone found out about it, actually kind of did a little organization on their own, and uh, got money donated to the foundation. And so we were able to not only buy the females, but they end up actually buying several more. Hmm. Um, the foundation provides scholarships for our employees. Good. Now there's a lot of scholarships out there for the kids of our employees, but not for our employees themselves. So this allows the foundation supplies. Hmm. So provide, that continues the education? Continues the education. Uh, it has been a tremendous thing, you know, there was a lady sending a hundred dollars yesterday she said i don't care what the foundation does with it but i'm so impressed uh and so thankful for sheriff's office use this for whatever you need to uh someone left uh, uh, a bequest upon their death of a significant amount uh and again we won't see that for some time but the idea of the foundation is to again we live in god's country we've got a tremendous law enforcement here uh and and it there's just not enough money well, and the point I want to bring out here is, how can I say that? Um, you're a friend to everybody. Well. Uh, and you care. I mean, you're. When, we care. When, when, I wouldn't say everybody. Say that again. I, I got 106 in jail this morning. That's not necessary. Well, they probably wouldn't agree. But. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but look at where we've come. When I was, and I'll just be honest with you, when, when, when we were in high school, you know, I graduated in 76, and there was that time frame of, uh, it was the cops, the fuzz, the pigs, you know, all those derogatory remarks. And it was, let's say we just weren't working together. But in the last 25 to 30 years, I've seen law enforcement say, hey, we, we're not here to fight you. We're here to help you. But in order for us to help you, you got to work with us. And I think, and I'm, I'm talking about Baxter County as a whole. See what I'm saying here? We're, we're not enemies. No. We're in this thing together. We really are. And, and, and here's one of the things that, and I don't know, to those folks that, that like me or like the style of you know, management, that's great. For those that don't, this really is said. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, I'm going to tell you the way I believe it to be. Um, but I can assure you that <clears throat> the decisions we make are based on what's best, what we believe is best for Baxter County. Now that doesn't mean we don't sometimes make mistakes. Sometimes we make wrong decisions, but, but I can assure you that is talked about lengthy. We have a staff meeting, my management staff, we have a staff meeting every Monday morning to not only discuss any issues that may be there, but what, what, we always say, what can we do to make things better? And that's what we're constantly striving to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we're growing and we've got, you can call them problems. You can call them challenges. Jail right now is obviously a big challenge, not just here, but all over, you know, we've got all over the state, 
every sheriff's facing this, but we're trying to figure out here. And here's an example. Starting tomorrow, um, we've moved visitation for females. Females now, we put out a press release, but if, but for visitation, the females are now going to be held on Friday afternoon. Okay. So why that came about is staff member came and said, look, we've got a problem because our jail's so full. We can't get all the visitors in and out. They're waiting for long, long periods of time. You can't put males and females in the visitation together. So again, staff came and said, here's a solution. We think it's good for us and our staff, good for the public who want to come visit uh, the folks, and, and it should help. That's that's the type of thing that I'm so proud of the, the folks that work for us. You bet. Let's take a quick break. More with the sheriff right after this. We'll finish out the show with the sheriff. Be right back. 748 on a partly cloudy May 7th and four-year terms. Yes. I like it. Well, um. Cheer that, Nate Bell. I like it. <laughs> so here is a quick uh, rundown. Uh, you know, and we talked about this d during the break. Uh, yes, I've worked extensively uh, trying to help get four-year terms, uh, as I said, on the ballot just so the voters have a chance to 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 say uh county officials currently run for office every two years and it's actually surprising how many people don't realize that uh when we were out before trying to to get it on the ballot people go you mean you already don't have a four-year term and here's the amazing part there are only two states in the united states where the sheriff runs for office every two years you know what the other state is let me think was it uh new york new hampshire new hampshire new hampshire i'm not sure i want to be that but anyway that's a whole nother issue but, but <clears throat> the issue we're the only two states in the united states left now there's a there's a lot of reasons why i think it's important in this particular case and this is what i i, I want to point out to the listeners it there it's going to be on the ballot in 2016 so when you go to the polls in 2016 you will have the opportunity to vote up or down allowing county officials. Now that is, by the way, the executive branch of the county officials. So that would not include the, the uh, quorum court members or justice of the peace, strictly be the administrators. Mm -hmm. Those people who administrate the law, which is the county judge, sheriff, uh, you know, collector, et cetera. And so you will, though voters will have an opportunity to vote up or down on the four year terms. If they vote it up, then on the 2008 election those people who run for office in 2018 then would be running for a four-year term so we pass it in 16 correct then those that are elected in 18 that take office on january 1st of 19 is when that established that is correct okay. that is correct and and i think i think that was done and that was discussed heavily this this time to make sure it was done that way because we didn't feel like we did we just felt like it would it's almost sound a little deceitful if you were voting if you were running for the, the term at the same time the voters were voting on it. So okay. that's why it was done this way. I think it's done fairly. Uh, there is, again, a lot of reasons why I think it makes good sense. When you look at it, you're you're constantly running for office. And I, and, I, and, I, and in my case, I'm blessed. I mean, because I've got a great staff to work with. The voters, uh, the people out here have been nothing but supportive of me. Uh, but again, when you look across the state, and that's what we're talking about, mm -hmm. You, you get out of office and you're constantly running almost immediately after the election, you got to start running again. And so well, that would basically mean that you're going to have to start campaigning a year from now. Oh yeah. Already. Oh, absolutely. It, you have to start, you have to start basically a year. So in my case, I, I would say, you know, you, you work a year, you campaign a year, you work a year, you campaign a year. And so, um, I think it's old. It, it, it's, I think it's old. Well, I would say this, someone said, you know, well, well, gosh dang what if you didn't know them and you elect them and you when you got a bad one well first of all there's there's current laws in place that you can take care of if you've got someone that's that that's corrupt or illegal or whatever number two how would you even know they've done a good job in two years because they're only after the first year you got to try to start trying to decide whether or not to, to re-elect them yeah. or not so you haven't even given them a chance to even to try to put their policies in yeah. place uh but I, it also disrupts uh not only because the arkansas is an at-will state Mm -hmm. So a new elected official can walk in and fire every employee. I don't know if you realize that or not, yep. but you know, the new sheriff, you know, when it, when I came in, we offered every single uh, person a job that worked for the sheriff's office, but that's not true necessarily. The, the sheriff can come in and say, you're gone. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, 
in, in our case, it's very disruptive to the employees. It's disrupted to, to the efficiency of the office. I agree. Um, you know, even in my case, because I don't drive, uh, you know, company vehicles to political events and that type of stuff during, during the campaign season, you know, you're constantly switching vehicles, you're changing clothes, you, you know, I mean, it's just, and then your schedules, uh, being able to meet with people goes down because you're, you're so tied up. That's why I think four year terms make sense. It allows now, you to focus on your job. Now there's going to be folks out there that don't, that don't agree with that. And that's okay. Because you know what, this is why I said from day one, when I started working on this issue, I want to get it in front of the voters. Mm -hmm. I want the voters to have, I want them to have their say. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why I'm pleased it's going to be in the ballot. Again, feel free to come by, call me, talk to me. We can discuss it more, you know, at times, but that'll be on the ballot in 2016. You got some new cars. Got three new cars, uh, and three more have been ordered. So, uh, cause the corn court gave us, gave us six. Uh, we sold uh, those four cars, um, and actually at, at auction and I'm thrilled. We actually, for those four got 4,100 and some dollars. Um, and that they were worn out. <laughs> <laughs> how many miles between the four almost a million, uh, right a million miles probably the yeah probably close to because you were running 260 270 yeah. thousand miles that, on it was probably close to a million miles on those four cars uh and and the problem is is like we talked about uh, you know when i brought it up to the quorum court we you we, we've got to replace we got to be on a, main, a a cycle in other words you can't go three or four years and not replace a car and then and then all of a sudden say oh gosh what you mean you need how many because mm -hmm. we need to replace so many a year yeah um and so it's at one point we had five in the shop at one time i got a uh i got a a, a text and a picture that had two on the same record uh <laughs> both responded to actually an emergency situation yeah one uh, broke down about a quarter mile down the road before they could get there. The other one uh, broke down and coasted into the to the driveway. And so the wrecker had to come pick up them both. And so I got a picture of both of them. And so while six That's may true. sound like a, a lot, but understand, Dale, this is the first new cars we ever had. Yeah. We've always bought used, used cars. cars. And so we think this is a smart move. And hopefully the Corm Court has kind of committed that they're going to try to get us onto a regular basis to replace so many a year mm -hmm. so we don't get in this mess again. Last minute of the show. It's all yours. Um, I just want to say thank you to the listeners and all. I'm telling you, we live in God's country. We do. And it's made up because of a lot of things. You look at the hospital we have, the medical uh, staff, you look at the library, you look at the school system, look at ASU. Uh, and surrounding areas. And surrounding areas. Connor, and, Gasville, Big Flat, Norfolk, absolutely. Million, Three Brothers, Midway. Look at law enforcement. We have an incredibly low crime rate. Uh, personal crimes, rape, robbery, murder, are, are virtually non-existent. Good. We certainly have property crimes, and we're going to continue to fight that. We live in God's country, and it's because we're all working together to try to make this place better. And I just want to say thank you uh, for the support I've received, and I'm blessed. I absolutely am blessed, mm -hmm. and... Uh, we support you and your thank you and your staff doing a great job support our sheriff john montgomery doing a great job great staff they've got a they've got a big job i wouldn't want to be in your shoes my goodness they cover from missouri line down to big flat to norfolk henderson and back over to cotter gasville midway you got a big job i'll just say last thing i think the difference our officers truly care about this community oh, and it shows when you look at what they do Thank you, Sheriff Montgomery, for being here. Thank you. Time for the Hannity update and other good things. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody.